Hello, this is Father David, here with Day 18 of the Nativity Fast 2023. Uh, the Gospel, actually the Scripture reading for today, is coming from the Saturday Epistle reading, uh, from the Epistle to the Galatians, Chapter 3. Now this is a, it seems to me, particularly Nativity-themed or appropriate reading as we approach the Nativity in the flesh of our Lord God. God and Savior Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the prophesied anointed one who has come uh, not only to buy back and redeem the people of uh, the covenant made to Abraham, but also to bring in the Gentiles as well. And so we're going to be starting uh, in verse 8 of chapter 3, going through verse 12. Because God knew in advance that the Gentiles would be declared righteous through faith, he first preached to Abraham, as it is said in the Holy Scriptures, In you shall all the Gentiles, all the nations, be blessed. So then it is the believers who are blessed through Abraham the faithful. For those who rely on the works of the law are still under the curse. For as it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not practice everything which is written in the book of the law. But that no man is justified by the law before God, it's evident. For as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Thus the law is not made by faith, but whosoever shall do the things which are written in it shall live in it. So this was uh, the Blessed Theophilact in his comment commentary on Jet, um, Galatians, uh, makes it clear that the Galatians were concerned. They were frightened uh, regarding, you know, if we embrace this faith in Christ and we no longer, uh, we do not observe the works of the Jewish law, you know, are we accursed by God? Are we rejected by God? Uh, and St. Paul is very clear that no, this is not something that is now required that the law, as he says elsewhere, is a, a pedagogue, a tutor, something that is useful towards uh, preparing us. Almost, a, you would almost say maybe an exercise in futility that we would attempt all of these works of the, the law of Moses and fail in them and thus be guilty of all. Uh, and so now you have the seed of Abraham, the seed, capital S, um, which ultimately, yes, I mean, you could talk about all of the, the Jews according to the flesh, as St. Paul says, but there is a seed of Abraham, uh, which is the promised one, the Christ, uh, who is coming. And St. Paul is very clear in this, where he says that if you are Christ's, to Christu, of Christ, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir, heirs according to the promise. Uh, for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but he who is one inwardly. So there is within St. Paul very much an idea of adoption, of adoption for all of the nations of the world. And this was going to be the nature of the church was that it was going to be a, uh, a you know, we use the word multicultural, you know, to talk about like a, a multicultural month or week or something. But truly that this would be a church that would reach out into uh, many cultures of the world, many peoples, many expressions, and that it would not be beholden necessarily to any of them to be molded by them uh, or to be a vehicle to affirm them, but that it would be uh, open to all from all of these cultures, that it would, and indeed you do see within the church, if you go to a Romanian church or a Russian church or a Greek church or a, an Antiochian church, you'll see uh, cultural distinctives. Maybe the music is different, you know. Uh, the the food afterwards is different, you know. Even the order of the service may uh, have uh, evolved and adapted in certain ways. But the church, 
in her offerings, in her theology, in her understanding, in her message of who Christ is, who this Jesus is that comes to be born, uh, it is the same. And in, in truly in thee, all of the nations, all of the Gentiles have been blessed. And so for us, this is the, the, the reality of the church is the fulfillment of that promise to faithful Abraham. It's also important to understand that we are not talking about, um, it says, you know, in verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, uh, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. It's important to understand that this is when St. Paul speaks about we are saved by faith and not by the works. He's speaking of the works of the Jewish law, which were said in and of themselves to justify a person before God. But uh, St. James is very clear that faith without any works to show that faith is dead. Uh, you know, now it's, it's simply a, uh, a question, you know, did Israelites exercise the works of the law with faith and trust in God that he would provide for them, save them, uh, all of this, I imagine so. But there now was the sense of, are we under this obligation? In order to please God, must we, you know, wear our clothing thus? Must we, uh, you know, eat this and not that? You know, are we obliged to observe strictly the Sabbath as a day of rest with all of its minutia in order to be pleasing to God according to Torah? And St. Paul says, no, this is something that is, uh, and, and very quickly in Acts chapter 15, you see this rapidly taking shape where those Gentile converts that are brought into the church are not obliged to keep the law of Moses for it was shown that the law of Moses was ineffectual in an ultimate way to provide for what only the Lamb of God you remember we heard about this yesterday on uh, Saint, uh, or on Thursday, on St. Andrew's Day, uh, that the Lamb of God, the uh, high priest, as we heard even a couple of days before that, of Christ would supersede the, Le the, Le the Levitical priesthood of the tribe of Levi. There is now one greater here. And this is what we understand that through our participation in the sacraments of the fast of the church, of the liturgy of the church, we are now uh, not uh, to slavishly give ourselves over simply to uh, obedience of rules as if this in and of itself was in any way salvific. But this is what has been given to us as our acts of faith and trust in the one and this is the important thing. The law points to one who had not yet come. The law, the, the law of Moses was in preparation, but he has come. We are preparing now in our annual fast to prepare for his coming as the one born of a virgin, taking on human flesh, in his flesh, confronting the imperfections of the law, fulfilling it in and of himself with his own flesh for us to forever free us, our human race. He is our representative from having to fulfill all of the minutia of the law of Moses, thereby finishing it off. And now we are free. We are under grace. We accept by faith. We receive forgiveness of our sins. We receive mercy for our shortcomings. Yeah, and we participate in the life of the church, which is given to all peoples at all times, in all cultures, in all places. So may we rejoice in this uh, epistle reading at God's great provision and mercy for us that we would continue to uh, approach him 
in humility, but understanding that his great mercy, his entire purpose for coming to be born in a manger in a cave is to give us this mercy, to give us this grace, to give us this forgiveness and reconciliation with his father. So Lord God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.